You got an easy one, Doc? Uh, one I'm familiar with. How's that? <laughs> uh, hello and thank you. I love the videos, Doc. Again, my pleasure. My question involves fertility post-TRT. I was on TRT for approximately two years and then stopped in an attempt to try for another child. I did not have any signs of low test prior to using TRT. It was just my preference. I have not used any supplementation now for six months. I recently checked my sperm levels using a home test and everything on that aspect looks good. Is it likely or unlikely that although my sperm levels are back to normal, I may not be fertile now? I do have one healthy child, so I know that my engine was working properly before. If I am not fertile, what does the process consist of through a doctor? Thank you again. I'm 36 years old. I'm not sure um, about this question because by definition, if your sperm levels are, well, I don't want to sidetrack here too much, but if they're back to normal, if, if your sperm levels are, well, let me stop and say that infertility is considered to be less than fewer, fewer, excuse me, fewer than 20 million sperm per milliliter. And all it takes is one. So that's the definition of infertility, okay? Fewer than 20 million sperm per milliliter. So he mentions here normal. If that's what he's referring to, is he still technically fertile or is his normal 150 million? At 36, it's probably not 150 million. It might be closer to say 80 million, half that, let's say. Um, but if you have sperm, then by def definition, you're fertile. Um, well, in a loose term. Again, I hate to keep breaking this down to stuff, you know, on technicalities, but uh, of course, when they do a semen analysis, they're going to look to see if the sperm are motile. That's right. And if their their morphology, their shape is is correct, um, so that plays into it too. And maybe that's what he's referring to because I, I'm, I'm reading it and say, well, yeah, if you have sperm, then you're fertile. But yes, that there is the the, the, the motility the, is an issue. Yeah, yeah to, to, they have to be properly functioning sperm, and maybe that's what he's asking. Um, again, I can't answer that. But just because you're on TRT doesn't mean that your sperm are going to be, um, they're usually fewer, but doesn't mean they're going to be um, not as modal. Um, as a matter of fact, you could argue that, uh, especially when you first start TRT, that they'll be bigger, stronger, faster. A typical sperm has a 74 to 76 day lifespan. And so if you started on T, you know, to, to, to get sperm going, you have to have... Uh, a release of testosterone from the lytic cell, which is what creates the testosterone, right next to the Sartoli cell, which is what uh, you know births, if you will, a sperm cell uh, or a sperm. Uh, without that local prime, uh, you don't get this Sartoli cell functioning properly. But once the sperm has exited the Sartoli cell, then it can survive and actually thrive on exogenous testosterone. So that's why I say, you know, in the beginning of a cycle, certainly you might actually have. Uh, you know, uh, sperm on steroids, <laughs> literally, um, that, that, that could uh, swim faster and, and make for better fertility. But um, again, the, the only thing I, uh, I would suggest that you get a semen analysis in this case to find out if there is any issue with morphology and motility. Uh, but... Um, Again, it says here that you, you know this gentleman checked his sperm levels. I didn't know you could. Do everything was good. So, well, actually, you can. I, I'm not sure what this kit is, but uh, you can get a microscope and you can uh, and you can order a kit. Um, well, a microscope that comes with a kit, and you have slides uh, that show you what a, a wow. you know, sort of a normal looks like, and you can. And that's how they do it. Actually, wow. they, uh, it's mechanized now, I'm sure, in many places, but. The old-fashioned way of doing it is you put it under a slide and you count and you see which ones are moving and which ones aren't and you can look at the the uh, the shape and, and so uh -huh. on and uh, so um, to, I, I just want to make sure I answer this gentleman's question um, it sounds like he is fertile but the process of, of checking again to make sure if this home kit only shows that you have a you have sperm but you don't know if they're the right shape and if they're modal 
then the process is to go to a, um, a, uh, a doctor that will write a requisition for a semen analysis and in the laboratory they'll do what I just said which is to take a peek and in, in, uh, either under a microscope, uh, you know, manually, if you will, you know, with a human involved, or now they can do it mechanically, and uh, and just do a, a count and see what what the quality of the sperm is. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it. That that's answers the question. Thanks, Doc. Go, Doc. This one starts. Is there a way to have DHT prescribed in the U.S.? As far as I know, no. Uh, or preferably products such as Masteron or Proviron. Also, no. Uh, both of these products provide far better results combined with a low dosage of testosterone in terms of both libido, well-being, and anti-estrogenic effects. They also eliminate the need for typical anti-estrogens such as Arimidex and uh, Nolbidex, etc. I've been taking test sip 150 milligrams per week and 150 to 250 milligrams per week of Masteron propionate for almost five years straight, and there's no comparison to get alone with an anti-estrogen. I've never experienced any side effects above that of TRT therapy alone after adding the Masteron, and adding it changed everything for the better almost instantly. By week three, my energy and well-being had recovered completely, my libido increased 100%, my gyno all but disappeared completely, and all the water retention I had accumulated on just TRT alone combined with Arimidex has, had completely disappeared. I suffer no problems from Masteron. Prostate is healthy. Hairline has never receded. Uh, before adding Masteron, it sounds like a commercial from Masteron. I know, he's really active. <laughs> I know, I'm teasing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it sounds like it did wonders for him. Uh, before adding Masteron, I would experience some highs and lows of mood. It seemed about 50-50, and since adding Masteron, I rarely ever experienced any lows whatsoever. I can't say enough about this product, so I hope someone can do some research and find a way to allow Masteron to be a an approved medication in the U.S. Can you do that, Doc? Uh, <laughs> no. Good luck with that. The answer is no. I wouldn't even know where to begin is the honest answer. Uh, it's a truly amazing product, and I speak for many people going the same route. Proviron produces similar effects, but not nearly as positive or pronounced. Uh, uh, other disadvantage is Proviron is an oral, and I feel it's healthier to avoid orals when possible. Do you think we will ever see Masteron available in the U.S., and would it be possible for a compounding pharmacy to produce it? Thanks for your time, John Anderson. Okay, I'm trying to mark a few things that I want to address. Um, first of all, you know, if you're doing testosterone uh, in the standard way we do it here in the U.S. anyway, and you're suffering from water retention, then my first inclination would be to assume that it's not being done correctly because the water weight is from excess estrogen. So maybe in this case, uh, I know you mentioned that he was taking uh, a Remedex, but maybe it wasn't enough. I mean, that's all I can think of right off the bat. I've never had an issue. And I'm an accountant before I was a doctor, so I'm conservative and I'm honest. I mean, I'm not, without, without a doubt, I've never had a problem, um, you know, dealing with excess water uh, by, you know, reeling in the, 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 the estrogen or making an optimum. So, you know, that, that's, um, and again, I just want to make sure we're not making assumptions here that are misleading. So I'm not sure, but my guess is that, you know, it just wasn't done properly. I'm not saying that this, that anything he's saying here is untrue. He probably is getting results. And again, this goes back to the individual nature of therapy. I mean, this is what makes medicine a lot of fun for me. And for some people on the other side of the table too, is that uh, it's not all the same. And some people have uh, better or different results with different products. However, Mastron would be considered contraband here in the U.S. It is not legal. Ditto for Proviron. So no, a compounding pharmacy cannot make anything that's not FDA approved here in the U.S. You get in trouble. Um, and I know it's kind of misleading because, uh, you know, with the Internet, people find stuff all the time. And, and somehow there are companies, I'm not sure if they're U.S., but uh, they're, 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 they're getting stuff through the border, you know, peptides particularly, mm -hmm. uh, because they're saying it's for research purposes. <clears throat> and I don't know if that's being, um, you know, if the FDA or whomever is responsible for uh, direct enforcement of that is just looking the other way or they're just outmanned or, you know. I always joke, uh, you know, with, with regard to growth hormone. It's the only FDA-approved drug that's not approved for off-label use. And yet, there's plenty of places you can go to where a doctor will prescribe growth hormone. I am not one of them because it is definitely, and you can look at the FDA website, uh, it is definitely illegal to do so. 
um, as of 2011 February, they list the seven conditions for which you can prescribe it. And they even go so far as to say, uh, on top of saying you can only prescribe it for these seven, you cannot prescribe it for anti-aging cosmetic or bodybuilding purposes. Um, wow. But uh, what these peptide companies are doing, uh, I think, is you know they're labeling this research. Oh, but I was going to joke that you know just because you see it being prescribed uh, doesn't mean it's legal. Just like you see guys on the 405, you know, buzzing down the highway at 90, drinking a six-pack, right? You know, it's totally legal, but they're just there's just not enough enforcement out there. I'm not suggesting there should be, by the way. Again, I'm on record as being a registered <laughs> libertarian. I just the law is a law. Um, as far as um, you know, some of these other things, the hairline receding, that's something that's genetic. Um, it's either in your genes or not, and the dihydrotestosterone can either uh, accelerate the hair loss. A receding hairline, I think of when he talks about receding, I think of this. Mm -hmm. This is uh, still to this day thought of to be uh, generated by your mother's father. Mm -hmm. Okay, It's either in your genes or not, and whether you have <clears throat> DHT in excess or not, it doesn't really play into this. Male pattern baldness, on the other hand, is also definitely genetic, but can be accelerated for sure with excess levels of DHT. And then just general hair loss, unless you're really, really a rare individual, meaning as you grow older, uh, you just all around start to thin uh, as a matter of uh, not just genes, but again, DHT exposure. So just because he didn't have any uh, receding hairlines doesn't mean it's necessary because, oh, wow. Unless he's saying, oh, I had some recession with the testosterone, but I'm not having any with the Mastron, and that yeah. you know, gets kind of dicey because maybe the timing, again, this is a, and I'm not picking on this at all, I just want to be clear, this is, you know, this is an in of one. Mm -hmm. There's a study of one person, and we don't know if it's because of things that just happen to correlate timing-wise or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So I just got to be careful. Uh, uh, I want to answer the question, but I also want to, you know, keep everybody else, uh, on the same page in terms of you know some relevant information um, do uh, do I ever see it being uh, available Masteron again a pharmacy a compounding pharmacy can't do it by law uh, I have no idea if it'll be considered legal we have something uh, on our formulary called halitestin which to me is nuts I don't know anybody who takes halitestin anymore and why you would want to it's really hard on the liver uh, makes people psychotic you know homicidal and yet it's allowed uh, as opposed to you know some of these other drugs now anavar and and uh, nandrolone are both um uh not contraband they're legal in the united states for certain indications uh i prescribe it uh you know for for wasting disorders which is what it's supposed to be for obviously and and thank god we have it but again halitestin i don't i don't know why that's on there so my point is why we would have master on on or off or what the rationale behind it is probably more of a political thing and i don't mean to be cynical it's just you know there somebody's going to have to want it for a good medical reason and there'll have to be a financial reason this is just my experience in 53 years there'll have to be a financial gain had to push it through the proper channels to make it legal um Despite that, yeah, obviously this is at least one person who believes that it's definitely helping. And, you know, again, sorry that uh, these things aren't available. Um, I think that I, I, did I miss anything? No, that that's question? pretty much it. Okay. <clears throat> he was hoping it would become, but I guess it'll have to run for Congress. <laughs> <laughs> no way, man. No way. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Doc. Yeah. Thank you, Doc.